Hair insecurity is something that a lot of men feel and, uh, and almost none talk about. 30% of men suffer from hair loss by the age of 30. That's a lot of guys. The people I hang out with, yeah. nobody talks about hair. They're uncomfortable with the idea of balding because they expect that I'm uncomfortable with it. They feel like there's no options at all. They're like, whatever, it happens. I'm gonna go bald, look at my dad. It was just weighing on my self-confidence. I think that we need to get down to the root of this problem. I noticed hair loss for me uh, about when I was 27. My wife told me I have a bald spot in the back. Wait, and when did she tell you you have a bald spot? She told me this last night. So I think the first time I actually addressed, like this is something that is real, yeah. uh, was coming to this video self-analysis. Don't be scared to take a look at it. I ignored it for a long time. So I showed you photos of me in college, and you're like, oh yeah, I could see it started there. And I'm like, what? <laughs> no, it didn't. <laughs> the earlier you discover it, the better chance you have of preventing it. What's your perception of hair loss and why it happens? They say it might happen from the mother's father's side. False. Genetics on both sides. So you're literally rolling the dice. So do your proper research. Look at your parents, look at your grandparents. Have you ever done research? Mm, I don't think that, I what? mean, why yeah. That? It's because of that inevitability. Nothing that I do is going to stop it. Men suffer from something called androgenetic alopecia. Men usually bald on top of their crown area in the frontal lobe to the back. It's kind of like that fryer tuck look. Well, what you told me is that it's testosterone that's blocking your Yes. Hair. And I was DHT. like, so I'm too much of a man. That's the problem <laughs> oh God, here. Here we go. It's DHT that causes it, which is a type of hormonal testosterone. It's hair miniaturization that basically closes the follicle. I've just kind of given up. We're here today to discover what we can do for you. Hey, I love that. Self-analysis will lead into hair scriptions. We have a mutual friend and you do his hair and his hair is fantastic and I'm like, I want that. I'm just like, I'm going to corner you and I'm going to get your secrets. As far as hair description is concerned, you're saying like how easy it is. I'm applying a cream to my head twice a day and then I have a pill that uh, supports strong hair growth. Something that adds two minutes to my morning routine. My hairline wasn't magically reappearing, <laughs> but it was slowing down the process. A huge avenue that people like to explore besides surgery is a laser comb. Laser comb. Right. The density of their hair is a lot more than it, what we started with. Propecia, I tried it. It was fine in the beginning, but I noticed my sex drive and my energy were lower than normal. And you were really great at making sure I understood how and why to style my hair in a certain way. There's an old myth of let's just keep growing your hair out and then we'll recover the areas of concern. I like sort of like try to press it into place as much as possible. Cool. So it's you don't see the spots or the receding parts. So walk me through your hair routine. That's an old ancient technique of water <laughs> and a comb. I feel like I need to find a style that works with it because it's thinning. I think that you can definitely rock different looks. Within seconds, your whole entire being kind of just changed and shifted. I looked good. When people look at you, you're looking straight onto them. So anything that's shorter, tighter here will focus on their jawline, will focus on their eyes so that it eliminates the focus of any hair loss. We're gonna try everything possible besides surgery. I've had a couple friends that have done uh, hair restoration. Yeah. There's only a handful of people that actually know that I've gotten the surgery. Wait, so today? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not embarrassed of it. I was able to find something that really fit my budget. Okay and did what I wanted. Yeah. So they took the hair follicles from the back of my head and placed them at the front. And after that eight, nine months, you start getting your hair growing back. I fixed what the issue was and now I'm preventing. Some guys don't care, but yeah. if they care, you should ideally have a stylist that you trust. I think it's important for guys to not only uh, you know have an open conversation with each other and be honest about each other, but hey, you know, I'm noticing something maybe you should check it out or go see a, a stylist because they really know what they're doing. As we're sort of talking about it and embracing it, we can share the tips that we're sharing right now, right. which I would never have ever found without just having a conversation. Yeah. So this is positive hair, positive person. Yes. Love it. I looked at it as the haircut I wish I always had. You look 10 years younger. Wow. Hey. <laughs> what do you think? Thank you so much. Thank I really you. Appreciate it. There's no shame in going bald, and if you are, like, that's fine. Yeah. But so I think it's also important to know that there are things you can do about it, yeah. and that if it's something that makes you feel better, take action.